Welcome to the broadcast ministry of Greater Mount Zion Church. I'm so excited. You've decided to tune in and watch our broadcast tonight. We believe that God has a word tailor-made for your situation. I'm excited about what God is doing here in this local assembly. But guess what? Sit back, relax, call a friend, call a neighbor. Tell them GMZ is on now. God does have a word for his people this morning. Something he needs you to know. Amen. Amen. And I love it when he has an assignment for his people especially when he chooses to use me. Amen. Amen. I ask that you be standing with me. We're going to read the scripture later, but I do want to have a word of prayer. First, let me give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for he is so awesome to me. He is indeed everything to me. I want to give honor to my pastor in his absence, his wonderful first lady, first lady Daniel King, and all the ministers, deacons, officials, and saints of God in the house today. Amen. It's an honor to be before you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for an anointing that destroys yokes, Lord God. We thank you for a right now word, Lord God, that will feed your people till they want no more, Lord God. We ask that you increase in this place, Lord God. Let no flesh glory in your sight, Lord God, and reduce me as far behind the cross as you can, Lord God, that people wouldn't even see me but hear your very word, Lord God. I thank you in advance that you are faithful to do what we ask, Lord God, on, upon request, Lord God. And we thank you that souls will be saved, minds will be fixed, Lord God. Healing will take place in this atmosphere, Lord God. We know you to be a God that can show up, Lord God, in the nick of time, Lord God. So now we ask that if anyone came in and need, Lord God, we pray that that need be met right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So now, Lord God, I ask that you forgive me for anything that I've done, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that you allow your word to show up strong on this morning. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Coming before you this morning, I'm excited. But, you know, sometimes when you preach this word, God will ask you to expose some things about yourself. You may be seated. We're going to read the word later. God will ask you to reveal some things about yourself, and in doing so, sometimes that's an awkward and uncomfortable place to be. Amen? Amen. So really quickly, if I had to give this word a title this morning, it would be, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. This is for the saints this morning who struggle with what I want to call spiritual amnesia. Amnesia is a deficit in the memory caused by brain damage or disease or philosophical or physical trauma. Oftentimes, people who struggle, in fact, people who struggle with amnesia experience memory loss. Either it's partially lost or wholly lost, but whatever way they experience the loss, they forget. Mm. Some of us have what I call spiritual amnesia because there are times in our lives where things come up that cause us too to forget. It's not that we don't care, and it's not that we don't know, we just forget at times. And oftentimes what life will do or what the enemy will seek to do in your life is dish you out blows that are so heavy and have you experience difficult times that are so bad that we tend to forget almost everything. You ever been so preoccupied with what life has going on with you that you forgot an appointment? You didn't call somebody on their birthday? You dropped the ball on something? And you wish you could say that it was because you didn't know, but you knew you just forgot. And so this morning, I come almost as a memory program for you. Almost as a person to just keep you in constant memory. And I submit that this morning, although we know that we love the Lord, and although we know that he's done great things for us, sometimes we forget. And so I'm here to be that string on your finger, that ink inside of your hand, that post-it on your calendar, that occupational therapist to jog your memory. We've been shouting for some time, and we've been believing God for some time now that we're going forward, that there are promises and there are things that God has for us. But I'm afraid that if we focus so much on the end goal and forget some of the things that are behind us, we will get there and not be prepared for what God has for us. So this morning, I came to convince you that there are some things that you need not forget. There are some things that you need to keep constantly before you. Remember how good God has been. Don't you forget now where he's brought you from. Don't you forget that when you frowned down on your brothers and sisters, such were some of you. And so we go now to Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5, and there will be a lot of word on today. Forgive me if we don't hoop. Forgive me if we don't shout. 
But sometimes we just need to be held in remembrance. Amen? Amen. Psalms 103 verses 1 through 5 reads as thus. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who giveth, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who sat, satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. But I must admit, I am one of those people who at times look at life circumstances and see the obstacle and see the barriers and see the lack of resources and what appears to be the lack of opportunity and even at times seeing myself as an obstacle and looking at my own mindset that get in the way of what God has for me and sometimes I do what this situation is talking about in verse 2 and I don't always bless the Lord all my soul because sometimes I do forget his benefits. And so this morning, I came to introduce you to the benefit package that suggests that you don't have to pay a copay. You don't have to walk around sick. You don't have to walk around distraught. You don't have to be consumed with how it's going to get done because you serve an awesome God who is capable and willing and able to do whatever it is you ask for. But we can't forget his benefits. What are those benefits? Well, they're in verses 3. He forgiveth your iniquities. See, we want to shout about the money and the cars and the bling and what he gives you and the house and the career. But how many of you all can shout because he forgave your iniquities? He healed your sick, sick soul. He let it go. He let it run. And maybe that's not enough for you to get excited about. But as I read this word, I had to admit sometimes I forget the basic benefits of serving the Lord. That everything I've ever done and got to do and will do has already been drowned in the sea of forgetfulness. Has already been washed away so that even the minor things that are still left, the residue of the sins that I've committed, God has washed them away so you can't even see them. That is enough to jump about. That is enough to thank him for. That is enough how soon we forget where we've been and what we've done and the mess we were once in. How soon we forget to get it caught up Because by the time I could get it in my head, it was already healed. And I thank God. But long story short, I found a lump in my breast and I went to my doctor and my OBGYN confirmed, yes, there is indeed a lump in your breast. And then I went to the health center down in Annapolis and they, they felt around and they said, yeah, we, we feel something. But when they went to go look for it, it wasn't there. So every now and then you gotta look back for what wasn't there. What are you talking about, Margo? I've never had a disease. So he prevented you from getting one you deserved. He prevented you from getting sticked out by something you should have gotten. I'm coming for those people who you know dang well and well. You don't deserve to be healthy. You treated yourself wrong. You did some wrong things, but God still healed it. Your diseases. So in all of this, God, give me my promise. God, I want what you have for me. God, I want opportunities. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you got to hold some stuff in your brain. You got to hold that he forgave you. You got to hold that he forgave you. You got to hold that he forgave you. And then you have to hold that he heals you. And I wish I could say that physical healing was the only thing I ever needed of God. 
But if you've ever had a broken heart, if you've ever had a broken heart, there's no pain like it. Advil won't cure it. Percocet won't knock it out. You can't get hooked to enough machines if you've ever had a broken heart. But I stand before you and say, he hear it for broken hearts. So if you came in this morning saying, what do I have to be grateful for? He forgave us all. Let us not forget, don't, don't forget, don't, don't, don't forget. And I must admit, I sometimes almost, almost forgot. The enemy will get you to a point in your life where you feel like this is the end of the rope. This is all I have to offer. This is it. And in that moment, you almost, <laughs> you almost forgot. But how many of you all know it's a blessing and an almost? It's a blessing and an almost. Because you should have gave me complete amnesia. But you left me with partial memory. So I can look back and see how far I came. And I can't give up now. I can't go into town now. He forgave me. He healed my diseases. He redeemeth my life from destruction, says verse 4. He redeemed that means he paid so I didn't have to. Mm. Woo. He paid so I didn't have to. Hey. He paid the price so I didn't have to. Maybe that's just for me. But I did some stuff and I should have reaped some stuff. But I thank God that he stood in the middle of my sowing and my reaping. And he said, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't give me that. He redeemed my life from destruction because I would have ruined my own life. I would have ruined my own life. But he redeemeth my life from destruction. And I love the next one. He crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. So in other words, he knew I would mess up again. And he set something on my head that says, I forgive you. And I'm going to show you grace and kindness. And it says tender mercy. That means that he doesn't give you mercy and pout about it. He gives you mercy and smiles about it. Hey! Who wouldn't serve a God like that, that sees your mistake and still say, I give you mercy and smile about it? Yeah. Verse 5 says, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. So that you don't get old like other people. You stay strong like an eagle. You fly above everything else. You rise above life situations. You come above all of the obstacles. Satisfy thy mouth with all good things. So we cannot forget that he redeemed us from destruction. We cannot forget that he forgave us when we really were unforgivable. We cannot forget that he healed us from our diseases. If you're in the book of Psalms, take a walk to the book of Lamentations. The book of Lamentations. For we will find some more information about what we shall not forget in the book of Lamentations. Lamentations 3, verses 17 to 23 reads. I ask that you write that down. Lamentations 3, 17 through 23. We're going to focus on scripture 21, but I want you to hear this verse in its entirety. Because I believe that the writer understood exactly what it means to get to a place where you almost forget. Lamentations 3.17 reads, And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. Anybody ever been there? I forgot prosperity. And I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gale, my soul has them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. In other words, the writer is saying that I forgot but I remember the affliction. I forgot the prosperity, but I remember the affliction. <laughs> you ever got to a place in your life where you forgot prosperity, but you remembered affliction? <laughs> I'm only talking to a few folks this morning. He goes on to say, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. What is he recalling? Well, go back because it says, I remember my affliction and my misery, 
the wormwood and the gale, my soul had still in remembrance and is humbled in me. It says, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. What does he recall? Go down to verses 22. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion faileth not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Y'all don't know when to shout. Y'all don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You're waiting for me to tell you to spin around three times and your car gonna be there. You're waiting for that kind of miracle. And I'm telling you that God is saying, can you appreciate me for the work I already done so that you, our silly tails can even sit here? He says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Meaning I may get down sometimes and I may experience affliction, but it shall not consume me. I may be in it, but it won't be in me. It is for the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. His compassion fails not. And I get excited right there because there have been some midnight hours where I needed God to wrap his arms around me. And after I promised I wouldn't do it again. Oh, anybody know what I'm talking about? After I said, Lord, I'm going to get it right this time, those arms didn't stop wrapping about me. Those arms didn't give up on me. Those arms didn't push me away because his compassion fails not. And just when I thought I ran out, because <laughs> you get to a point where you get tired of coming to the altar yourself, <laughs> asking for mercy and grace. But just when I thought I had found out that it was over, I was going to give up, I almost forgot who I was and what I belonged to. God took me back to the fact that every day I wake up, they are new. <laughs> Meaning that I went to sleep in a mess, but I woke up to new mercy, to new compassion, to new grace. And I know you want to shout because you're getting something, but I dare you to thank God that they are new every morning. And because of his mercy, you're not consumed. They are new every morning. And then it ends by saying, great. Mm. Great is thy faithfulness. When I backslid, when I didn't do what you asked me to do, when I cheated on God, when I put things before him, when I didn't worship him like I should, when I held back my money, when I held back my honey, when I didn't give it all up to him, it was his faithfulness that never ended. It was his faithfulness that continued to flow. When I cheated, he was faithful. Hey, when I cheated, he was faithful. Great is his faithfulness towards me. I just needed to be reminded. I just needed to remember that God's promises are what they are. So I said, what specifically, God, should I not forget? I need just a couple of things, God, that you tell me I should not forget. Go with me. We'll be finished soon. So number one, Margot, don't forget my promise. Hmm. You need to keep that promise before you. That's why I love this wall, because it keeps the promise before you. Don't forget my promise. Second Corinthians 1 and 20 says, for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Hmm, you missed it. In other words, his promises are yes and uh-huh by us. So I can carry out God's promise. So don't you forget when an obstacle presents itself. Don't you forget when life gets hard that God's promises are still yes and uh-huh. Right. Right. What else should I not forget, Lord? Don't forget your position. Mm. And don't confuse position with title. Because title has nothing to do with position. It doesn't matter what's in front of your name. Your position still remains the same. Come on now. Galatians 4, 7 through 9 reads as thus. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. In other words, I don't have to position myself before God like, ooh, it's me. God said, because you're a son, you're in direct relationship. So in other words, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir. An heir of God through Christ. So don't you forget, because I know the haters that try to make you forget. 
See, they like to remind you of where you've been and what you've done. But God's word says his promises are yea and amen. And my position is an heir. I can't be nothing else but an heir. I may forget at times that I'm an heir. I may forget that everything that the father has will trickle down to me. But I'm glad Margot showed up this morning to remind me I ain't got to beg for nothing. Because I'm an heir. Everything my daddy got belongs to me. I heard him say there's mansions on a diamond hill. I heard him say the streets are paved with gold. So there's nothing I'm asking that he can't provide. Because he said his promises are yes and amen. Can't forget my position as a son or a daughter of Christ. I can't forget who my daddy is. And let me pop right here for a minute. You see what happens when you forget, and I can talk about this because I've been there. When you see me at the altar crying and snotting, it's not because I don't know who I am at this moment in my life. I can honestly say after a long journey of searching, I know who Margo is. But here's what I cry for. I cry for the years I lost, letting other people take advantage of me not knowing who I was. That's what I cry over. I cry about the times when I let people use me because I didn't know my value. I let people get in a relationship with me because I had no idea who I was. I said, God, give me back the years that the locusts and the cater worm have taken because now I know who I am and I deserve better than you. I deserve better than this so I can walk on a job and make some demands because I know who I am. shake your head at some stuff. I'm just being real about where I was. Look back and honey, forgive me, I look back at some dudes and I'm like, wow, would you ever, my God. Honey, what would you think? What was that about? I know you vote for the underdog, but my God. You look back at some places you stood some things you fell into. And you say, oh my God, with all this in me, I went there? But I told you, I almost. Who, hmm. even at the east side going to see Essence, I almost, I almost forgot. Yeah, I went there. I almost, I was there, been there, done that. And I almost forgot. But how many of you all know you can stand in a club? You can stand in a go-go. You can even be on a pole. Yeah, I said it. And God will remind you of who you are. And instantly, there's a discomfort down in your spirit that your friends don't know about, that your family can't see. But you know you're too good for that. You don't belong there. So God told me, tell you, don't forget his promise. Don't forget your position. You're an heir. The scripture goes on to say, and I'm in Galatians 4, I'm going on to verse 8, it says, How be then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which were by nature are no gods. In other words, when you didn't know God, you, you served the people that weren't even God. They had no power. It says, but now after that, ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, where until you desire again to be in bondage? And I said, God, I never knew that it was bondage to be a beggar. Hmm. Now, I understand it from a concept of standing outside homeless asking for change, but listen to me. But when you go before God begging for stuff that he's already given you, when you approach God like you don't have the power to attain what he's given you, that's beggary. So in other words, God is saying, have you forgotten? Hey, have you forgotten who you are? Why are you coming to me like you don't know me? Why are you coming to me like you don't have relationship? When you come to me, you need to come to me as if you know who you are. Because if you act like you got a bag, that's bondage. Don't forget your promise. Don't forget your position. I said, okay, God, I kind of don't have the best memory, so to make the list short, so I can remember all of this. He said, I will not. <laughs> so 
Don't forget my promise. Don't forget your position. He said, and don't forget your paternity. And that only means something to those who've been fatherless, who lacked a father in your life. Nobody to cheer you after a goal. Nobody to hold you and tell you you're beautiful and you're wonderful no matter what you really look like. If you lack the father figure, oftentimes you'll chase after one. You'll look for love in all the wrong places. But God said, daughter, I got you. Your father might not have been there like you wanted him to, but I am a God who never leaves you and will never forsake you. And I'm a father like no other. I'm a father in the midnight hour. I'm a father in the middle of day. I'm a father when you don't know how you're gonna make it. And I'll hold you in the middle of the night. I'll wipe your tears away. And not only will I tell you you're beautiful, but I made you, so I know you better. So I'll hold you, and I'll love you. And I'll tell you even when you're at your worst state, then Marlo, you are beautiful. And I don't know about you, but I can use a daddy like that. I don't need a sugar daddy. Don't buy me no shoes or no clothes. What I really need So while you're remembering the promises I have for you, and while you're remembering where I placed you in the kingdom and your position, and while you can thank me for your paternity, daughter, in this season, I need you not to forget your power. Mm. Because when the enemy sees you, he knows you're valuable. Mm. See, even before I knew what I was worth, he knew what I was worth. <laughs> even before I understood what I was worth, you know, I used to wonder, let me, let me take a little moment right here. I used to wonder why so many people were so pressed, you know, because I never thought, I'm going to be honest with y'all, I never thought I was a looker, you know, like, oh, she, she looks so nice. I knew that wasn't it. And um, for those of y'all that don't know, I didn't get smart to like my older years. So it wasn't, wasn't, you know, wasn't offering me that. So I said, Lord, why do I have haters? If they knew the story, you wouldn't want to be like me. Why? the world would you hate on me if you had any idea what it cost me you would be like I don't want to be like that one now next to the next one so I was confused and I often would tell people nobody could ever be jealous of me they don't even see why that's just dumb like I didn't understand that because like I said I didn't know I was valuable I equated value to how you fix this up Y'all ladies, gonna, y'all gonna lie to me this morning. Like, you know, people ain't tell you that, you know, you get all that ready and then that make you who you are and people, boys are like you and all of that. Mm -mm. So now my swagger is on a thousand. Not because of this. Don't get it twisted. It ain't because of nothing you see. But in the inside of me, down in my lungs, it's some power. It's some stuff that can pray out the devil. It's some stuff that can lose some things.
sometimes we say it is what it is, but I claim it, it is what I call it. Because I got power. You ain't got to like it, but I got power. I got power to say it is so and it shall be. I got power to say it is free and it shall be free. I got power. I got power to tread upon the enemy and it won't even hurt me. And I won't lose sight of my paternity, and I definitely won't lose sight of my power. I'm not waiting on anybody to give me anything. With all of this power, it would be a shame to have superhero powers. And when the enemy come after you, you just stand there. We were watching Batman Returns. And he had this really neat bike. He was rolling, and then he could make like a right angle turn, like a 90 degree turn, like at the drop of the like, Look at that. That's powerful. <laughs> and then the cat woman, you know, she do stuff. And then the other ones, they would hit you and your body fly all the way across the room. And I stood there and said, gosh, that's a lot of power. And then I watched Malcolm X. And they stood in a line. And my appointment, and they all turned. And I was thinking it, but the man in the movie said it. It's too much power for one man to have. And I sat there thinking about them two movies since then. And I said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So if I stand flat-footed at the enemy at the door of my house and say, It ain't gotta be loud. I ain't even gotta bust a sweat for it. Go on, get it. Go on. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. 
We can't forget. We can't forget. And I pray that you be reminded by the word this morning who you are, who you belong to, and what you are capable of. Because we go through seasons in life. I don't know about you, but there are times where I feel like I can do anything. And I'm high above the clouds, and I'm ready, and I'm going. And ooh, I gotta, 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 gotta. And then all of a sudden something happens like poof. You have to have something to hold on to. And my words won't do it. But the word of the Lord that says you have power, position, promise, paternity, it's yours. That's what you need to hold on to. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. We believe that this message you heard this evening is truly going to bless, impact, and change your life. If you would like to get this message or any other in this entirety, please call the church. All the information is on the bottom of the screen, our website. You can also reach us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all forms of social media. Listen, we're excited to hear from you because we want to stay connected to you. And don't forget, whatever you do this year, go forward now. Until next week, God bless.